Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken Nalbum. Uh, in addition to everything that you see here on the screen, uh, I am also a leader of a VMUG and a Veeam user group in Indianapolis. So I decided to, that I would talk today a bit about my experience learning the Veeam PowerShell snap and to kind of ease my pains in doing a lot of clicking that I was doing day to day in one of my jobs. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Um, I was at the Veeamon user, uh, the Veeamon conference in uh, New Orleans earlier this year, and I was surprised by the amount of people that I ran into that don't even touch PowerShell. They say, I, I don't have time to learn it. I'm too busy. I feel like if you're busy, you don't have time to not learn it. That's what it's all about. So that's what this is about a bit today. So what is the Veeam PowerShell snap-in? It's basically just a set of commandlets developed to behave like other Windows PowerShell commandlets. How you get it is really simple. You install the Veeam console. That's the only way you can get it. It used to be available, I believe, as a standalone installer, but these days, as of version 9, and now we're on version 9.5, with 10 about to be released, you must install the console to access the Veeam PowerShell snap-in. To get to it, you just left-click up in the corner of the Veeam console, go down to console, click PowerShell, wait for it to open. If you're impatient like me and you don't want to open the Veeam console to get to it, you can just load it up from within a PowerShell window. Just use the uh, command get ps snap-in registered to find out if it's actually installed, for, for starters, and then once you're ready to run it, you just hit, type in add ps snap-in, veeam ps snap-in, and you're good to go. Uh, then if you want to view what is available, you just gotta go ahead and type git command dash module and veeam ps snap-in, and then you know, you'll get this very helpful output we're about to see, about you know, 17 bajillion commands. Uh, these are all documented on help center, helpcenter.veeam.com, by the way, so that's a great place to start to get to know what all these commands do. If you're running this from a remote server, you definitely want to make sure that you connect first via the command get VBR server. So that's how you find out if you actually have it. If you want to know how to use it, just type in help as with any PowerShell command. Help connect VBR server. We'll give you the information that you'll need in terms of passing credentials and whatnot. You see that from the description. It creates a connection with a local or remote Veeam backup server. So why would you use this? Veeam just works, right? I know they're going through a bit of a rebranding. They have a new logo, a new tag phrase, tagline. But um, I'll tell you my story, basically. Uh, I was working for a service provider a little while ago, and uh, we were running a multi-tenant vCloud director environment, which is a great solution for service providers. Uh, what, and because of that, we were using Veeam to back up our tenants' virtual machines. It supports vCloud director natively. So we had dozens of backup jobs sitting in our Veeam backup server for our IaaS environment. And not only that, uh, up until about a year and a half ago, my experiences with PowerShell went something like this. Uh, you know, I, I was the guy who I Googled somebody else's PowerShell scripts, and I hoped and prayed that I could get them to work in my environment. I never created anything on my own. It's something new to learn. I'm too busy to do it, that whole thing again, right? Well. The reason I needed it was because I was using Veeam's storage integration feature, which is great. Uh, the list is growing of uh, storage arrays you can use with uh, integration in Veeam. It leverages storage snapshots to lessen the load on your backup environment. Uh, the thing is, I, I had a storage uh, environment that whenever I needed to do certain maintenance tasks, if a storage snapshot occurred during that maintenance task, it would be restarted. These maintenance tasks took several hours, sometimes several days. And when you've got backups running nightly or even hourly in some cases, these storage maintenance tasks never completed. So I needed to go through and disable storage integration during my maintenance windows for every single job, which was, as I mentioned, dozens. Doesn't seem, seem too bad. The Veeam console is really intuitive, right? Well, let's count the clicks it takes me to get to that screen. This is my home lab, this is not a production environment, but one click to open the job, two clicks to go to the storage section, three clicks to open the advanced window, four clicks to go to integration, five clicks to disable, it. six clicks to click OK, seven, and I'm finally done with one job. You guys remember the Sierra games back in the day, like King's Quest and Space, Space Quest? Space Quest, yes. Um, well, this is like sysadmin's quest, but without the fun. So I decided there's got to be a better way. I don't want to do this for dozens of jobs. It was taking me a long time every time I needed to do this. So I dove in uh, to PowerShell. 
I checked out, I found three commands that I thought would work for me that came with the Snappin. First one, get VBR job, returns just a list of jobs. Second one, get VBR job options, check out the options inside that job. I thought maybe if I can find the correct option to change, I could do it without actually going into the GUI. And then the third command I use, set VBR options, to actually return the options you want into the job inside me. So I keyed off of those three and I spent about an hour or two uh, one day in my office trying to figure out how I could do this. Uh, this is a dramatic reenactment, I'm not doing a live demo. I basically dove in, I decided to first sec see what jobs I got. I decided, okay, I'm gonna check out the critical job. I'm gonna start with one job to see if I can just change the option once and figure out what that is. I'm assigning the job named critical to a variable named critical job with this command right here. I should learn to type faster, this will go a lot quicker. After that, I decided to pass the options for that job into a new variable I named critical options with the command get VBR options and pass it the job in the variable critical job or critical, yeah, job. And then I decided to see what's, what's inside critical options. I want to know what options exist and somewhere down the list I found SAN integration options. Okay, what's in there? That, that looks like a good place to start. That might have something to do with whether I'm using SAN snapshots or not in my jobs. So I dove a little bit further, checked out SAN integration options and boom, right there at the top. Use SAN snapshots. It's currently set to false because we unchecked that box a moment ago. So okay, I'm onto something. Can I change it? I uh, went into critical options, SAN integration options, use SAN snapshots, tried to set it to true, see what happens. And you'll see here, I should learn to type faster. This will go quicker, but I got plenty of time, right? I can't really speed up the video though. There we go. It's set to true. Sounds good. So what I've done now only is just set the options in this variable to true. I actually need to return it to a job. So I'm gonna use the set VBR options command, pass it to that job named critical in my backup environment and see what happens. So I hit enter, it's gonna spit out a lot of output. Somewhere in there, it may actually show that I've changed the option, but I decide seeing is believing. I'm gonna go back into my console and check it out. I'm gonna play sysadmin's quest again and go seven clicks deep to just to make sure that that checkbox has been re-enabled. Go back to advanced, go into integration, and there we go, it worked. So based off of that, I figured I could probably do that to all of my jobs. Um, you know, I'm not a proficient scripter. I'm no Alan Renouf or Luke Denkins, but I came up with something like this. Uh, basically seven lines long, it's probably not a script as so much as it's a text file with that PS1 extension and a few commands in it. But this will get all my jobs, go through each one of them. You notice that it says it's setting it to true in this one. I have another file where I have it set to false and that enabled me to quickly just enable or disable storage integration in all my jobs and beam with one go without playing sysadmin's quest and clicking all through. Uh, and I was very, very happy with myself. So now am I this guy? Is this my PowerShell proficiency? No, I'm more like first day on the internet kid. I know I'm making mistakes. I'm learning things new and I'm excited. I'm probably getting a few things wrong, but I feel like I'm making progress and I'm very happy with that. So, and you know, you gotta crawl before you can walk, right? So maybe I'm not great today, but I'm better than I was a year and a half ago and all I did was Google other people's PowerShell scripts. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. I put a few resources up here. I don't have a blog yet to put these on. Maybe I'll tweet them out. So if you wanna follow me at Ken Nalbone, I'll stick them up there. Um, also, first day on the internet kit on GitHub. So if you wanna go check them out, if you're much better with PowerShell than me, send me a pull request and I'll have to learn how that works uh, so I can in integrate it. But I'd be happy to hear any feedback, any questions. Just let me know. Thanks everybody, happy scripting. Do you want me to rewind so you